Our top story this afternoon, the government's migration strategy. Coming up on the program, we speak to all the key players. We'll be talking to the Home Affairs Minister, Claire O'Neill. The Shadow Minister for Immigration, Dan Tien, will be with me live in just a moment. First, though, I want to bring in my colleague, Tom Connell, to, to crunch the numbers, to look at this strategy. And, Tom, let's start with a, a look at what has emerged as an issue for Australia, both in the short term but in the longer term as well, and how this strategy, how does it navigate that? Yeah, well, this is one thing the two major sides agree on. We've got an issue here. As you alluded to, there's very much a short-term element. COVID, borders shut, post-COVID, we've got migration spiking. This is net overseas migration. The blue is 2018-19. This is the last financial year before COVID, 2022-23. It's the second year when we've opened up borders, but it's still rocketing along. As you see, international students, 100,000 in that previous year, 18, 19, up to 270,000, nearly three times as many. Other temporary migrants arriving here from 80,000 up to 180,000, so two and a half times. The permanent visa holders are the ones that are much more static. But then you get to the total here, the net overseas migration, more than 500,000 forecast. We haven't finished this year just yet, versus 240,000. So this is one issue. It's the short-term element. How can the country handle that many people coming to the country from a housing and infrastructure point of view? There is a longer-term, though, issue as well, because we're looking here at the number of Australians, the number of people in the country. These are temporary migrants with workers' rights. In the year 2000 is blue, and this is population. So 2000... The year 2000, 700,000 were in the country in total, out of a population of 19 million. What's that? Below 4%, a relatively small cohort. Get to 2023, the population's grown, 19 million up to 26 million. Look how much that cohort's grown. More than three times, up to nearly 2.4 million, and that percentage there, now 9%. So it's a really big figure. Who are the people? Who are the temporary migrants with these worker rights that we're talking about as well. When we look at the breakdown in terms of who they are, you get an idea for the sort of categories the government can actually have an impact on. So 700,000 New Zealand citizens, they're not going to cut that amount. They've got rights. Then you get to the big one, students, 660,000. These are the number of students right now in the country with those worker rights. And the onflow from those up to this cohort, graduates in the country. So if you add graduates and students, you got more than 800,000. This is the lion's share of that number. The other ones, you're not going to see huge changes in bridging visas as basically a, a temporary sort of class. Skilled workers, well, we don't need fewer of them, we need more of them. And working holiday makers, uh, even that cohort as well, if you're talking about working holiday makers, we don't need fewer of them. We saw how crucial they were, for example, in some of the years when we're talking about um, uh, some of the farm jobs and so on. The other issue here, when you look at the students and the graduates, what sort of jobs are they getting here after they graduate? And this is the other problem being highlighted by this review. This is people here, international students in Australia who have a bachelor's degree. This is where they end up in, in terms of their employment. With that bachelor's degree, they should be the top two, level one or two. That's the qualification level they're at. We're talking IT managers, school teachers, accountants, cafe managers, hotel managers, but only 44% end up in a job they're qualified to do. The rest are going below their qualifications. Level three, perhaps not so much a problem. Motor mechanics, electricians, we still need them. When we get to level four and level five, more than 50% with these relatively high degrees as bar attendants, baristas, couriers, postal deliveries, and so on. So it's this mismatch between the degree they're getting and what they're actually doing in Australia that's part of the problem. The government adamant that they're going to have short-term solutions in place when it comes to international students, they want to change the mix as soon as possible. We've put forward uh, measures here that will help us bring net overseas migration back to normal in a very short time frame. They're very significant measures that we're taking here. Things like increasing the English language requirements for students, making sure that the students who are coming here are going to be able to study and going to be able to thrive in our labour market. If we do not succeed in that, of course there are other things that we can do. So, Tom, what solutions are offered by the government in this much-anticipated document? Yeah, so a couple of different changes here. First of all, the broad brushstrokes in terms of what's going to change around our migration process. So the two, first two you can see that are really targeted international students' English requirements, they'll ramp up 
So the requirement, your level in English as an international student is going to be higher than it needed to be before. Basically make it in line with workers that are arriving here. So that will mean fewer students overall because we're going to be a little bit pickier, if you like. I'll just get them to stay on that first um, graphic if we can because the other one is it's not just about reducing, it's also about workers. So there is going to be a new skills in demand visa. And they're talking about maybe even a processing and at least approval rate of within seven days, Kieran, where previously people in high demand have had to wait months. What this will mean as well in terms of cohorts and how that's all spread out, think of these different cohorts. And this is what the government wants to be thinking about right now. The first one, if we bring this next graphic up, is talking about 70,000 income. Now, while we're talking about upskilling Australians, we still need these so-called less essential skills, such as aged care workers. What's going to happen? How will they get attracted? Well, that's a bit of a to come, detail to come there. Core skills then, 70 to 135,000. But then the specialist skills is the big focus. So it's going to be a relatively small number of Australians in terms of those specialist skills, but a big focus because they can be crucial for the economy. We've heard from the government earlier on the fact that it does want to change the mix, if you like, of migration. We have a good reputation globally as a provider of international education that we should all be concerned about protecting and the universities are right there with us. They do not want Australia to be known as a country where you come here, you get exploited, you don't get educated properly and frankly the course that you signed up for wasn't quite what it looked like. So we've got a bit of a repair job here to do. Claire O'Neill will be joining us a bit later in the program live in the studio uh, and they're, they're trying to achieve that balance of peering back migration on the one hand without hurting or uh, damaging key industries like, like the international student industry which is one of our biggest exports. And they are talking today about reduced migration albeit off the back of some very high predicted figures. So these are the latest forecasts. Keep in mind these are just forecasts Kieran. The chance of these being right in every single year down to the, the nearest person, I would say, is unlikely. So red is where it's going up beyond expectations. The current financial year, more than 100,000 up. The green is when we're seeing downward pressure. So the new forecast, if you like, over that period, about 200,000 or, as you can see, 185,000 people fewer overall. So whilst that's part of the emphasis, they're talking about these other types of visas and still hoping to keep business on side by faster processes, easier to get people in for these tough skills such as IT and others that we are struggling in. Here was the Minister. We're trying to make it easier for business to get especially those skills at the very highest levels of the labour market. And the purpose of the specialist skills pathway that we are announcing today is really so that we can get those skills into the country that we can't grow quickly at home, but that we urgently need. Think about uh, people who are working as psychologists who will take otherwise, you know, 10 to 15 years to train. People like cyber specialists who we desperately need here to help the whole of the Australian community skill up on these things.